U.S. President Joe Biden has had another week trying to convince Americans he's in charge and he's doing a good job. Let's just take a moment to have a reality check of what's being claimed and what's really going on. This week, Democrat Jim Clyburn said that inflation is down 40 percent of what it was when Joe Biden took office. Is that inflation today is about 40 percent of what it was uh, when Joe Biden took office. And so the inflation rates are down and people's incomes are up. Well, the fact is inflation in March actually rose to 3.5 percent and it's been rising for three months straight. Now, this next issue concerns me. In a rare television interview, Joe Biden claimed that he was unsure if he has the power to shut down the U.S. border. Have you made a final decision on taking executive order uh, in terms of what you want to do at the border? That includes the power to shut down the border, as it was suggested. Well, it suggested that. We're examining whether or not I have that power. I would have that power under the legislation when, when the border has over five 500,000 people, 5,000 people a day trying to cross the border because you can't manage it, slow it up. There's no, there's no guarantee that I have that power all by myself. Well, Joe Biden does have the power to issue such an order. Former President Donald Trump successfully issued several. This is clearly just about politics and votes for Joe Biden. No federal court is going to second guess the White House making the call that is desperately needed to severely restrict border crossers. Finally, in that sit down interview, Joe Biden was stumbling all over the place as he attempted to discuss funding for Ukraine. While he was doing so, he couldn't remember the word Congress. This is the reaction from commentator Amanda Rose. It's actually quite sad. Yeah. So I actually think that whoever is putting him in that position to do these interviews, to go out publicly and humiliate himself, obviously hate him. I think his own people hate him, I really do, because you wouldn't treat your grandfather like this. You wouldn't treat any human being like this. He is, everyone knows that he doesn't really know what's going on. So then my question is, who is really in charge here? Who is, who's making the shots? We know he's not sitting there at his desk making the big decisions, someone else is. And they're putting him out the front. So who is it? And then when they put him out the front, it's just a disaster. I was speaking with some colleagues of mine saying, here is media advisor, of course you put him in hiding. You, you put him out uh, in front of the television cameras and, and he stuffs up. And that's right. And if we flip this, if that was Trump or anyone else, really, so if that was a Republican of any kind, that would be ripped to shreds. You're incompetent. You're, you're not a leader. We don't have any confidence in you. So the hypocrisy here really is quite suffocating. And you know what? People are sick of hypocrisy, regardless of what side of politics yeah. they're done. Let's look at the economy in America. Stubbornly high US inflation has grown stronger than expected. US prices rose 3.5% in the 12 months to March, which is up by 0.3% from February. Um, how will the state of the US economy impact the election? A lot. I mean, that's kind of, well, let's face it, when Trump won, he was pushing for the working class and the small businesses, and everyone went, yes, I can relate to that. And at the moment, you have people that can't afford healthcare, they can't afford food, they can't afford housing. These are basic necessities. And look, Australia's not far behind, let me tell you, with, with what we're going through. But of course, it's going to dictate it. I think a lot of political parties assume that people care about giving billions of dollars overseas. No, charity starts at home. Yeah. So you've got to get your own house in order first, and people know that. When they're seeing their children or they themselves can't get a job, or they've got to work three jobs to pay for rent, or they get kicked out because of the rental market and all of this, they don't care about your you know, international globalist policies. They care about how am I going to feed myself this week and my family. When Americans are really feeling the pinch like that, and we're back where we were just four years ago, it seems like it's between Trump and Biden at this stage. People aren't really that inspired. What's your assessment of where leadership is at in America and around the world? Oh, can I just say that leadership in general everywhere, I think we've lost uh, what we call good quality leadership. So a leader isn't just someone who wants to be a leader. A leader is someone who has got good character, has got compassion, can be very decisive, 
isn't easy manipulated by money or blackmail, right? We need someone that can stand up, represent everyone and not make sure no one feels alienated. We're missing that globally. We absolutely are. Everyone is following money or they're trying to get into a powerful position. But when it comes down to America and the election, I say to people, don't look at who's leading the party. Look at the policies of the party. Yeah. And it's the same here or any country. What are the policies? And that takes effort. You know, and a lot of people don't have the time because, they, like I said, they're working multiple jobs. Find out who have they supported. And when I was in uh, the US when Trump was actually in administration, mm. I found out through women who actually disliked him a great deal, but they said that his administration funded women in entrepreneurship and female startups more than any other, even though they hated him. They still acknowledged that, yeah. right? So that's what I really appreciated, that you can't stand the guy, but you liked his policies, and that's what we need to go back to. And it's a good point. I think too many people get caught up in, in things that someone may have said, their personalities, they may yeah. rub people up rough, the wrong way. Yes. Uh, but if you look at the policies, then you can make an informed decision. That's right, because the leaders will change. I mean, they look the wrong way one day, and, the, and that party will bump them out. We've seen that happen in Australia, right? So we need solid policies. So look at the policies and look at their track record as well. Let's look at Donald Trump's campaign trail so far. Melania has so far been key keeping her distance from his re-election efforts. But it appears now that the election is drawing closer, that Melania is officially back. She was photographed at a fundraiser in Florida on Saturday, which reportedly brought in $50 million. Some are speculating that she could be Trump's secret weapon. Do you agree with that? I absolutely agree with that. And I think we underestimate women. I mean, we do anyway, but we do when it comes to politics. And I actually think she hasn't been treated well at all. So. When we look at profiling the first lady, um, you know, she wasn't put on the front cover of Vogue and places like that. It was like, oh, but you're connected to Trump. That's not feminism, right? That's conditional feminism. And I don't agree with that. Uh, I think she's an individual in her own right. Get to know who she is, what she stands for. And you know what? People do underestimate women. And I absolutely love that because usually we come out on top at the end. <laughs> yes, we do. I like your assessment of that too. What would you say her pull is? Do you think the more we're going to see Melania on the campaign trail, we're going to see popularity for Trump rise even further? I think she targets us a different demographic. So uh, when you actually, people need to take the time and listen to her speak and go and do some, again, research, yeah. takes effort, right? Very compassionate lady, very switched on, very family orientated. And let's face it, that is going to resonate with pretty much every woman out there.